Hello, my name is Derek Kinder, and I'm a hydraulic engineer with the Risk Management Center. In this video, we are going to discuss regional skew and prior distributions for parameters. This lecture will provide an overview of regional skew analyses, provide an understanding of prior distributions for parameters, demonstrate how to incorporate regional skew info as a prior distribution, and introduce kernel density. We'll start by discussing the skew parameter of LP3, which measures the asymmetry of the distribution. Let's remember that a log normal distribution has zero skew and plots as a straight line on a normal probability log plot. A positive skew produces an upward curvature as the long upper tail reaches higher vertically on the right. A positively skewed LP3 is bounded below. A negative skew produces a downward curvature as the long lower tail reaches downward on the left and the short upper tail pulls downward on the right. A negatively skewed LP3 is bounded above. Parameters are typically estimated from the at site flow data. Because discharge gauge records are generally short, there is often a relatively large uncertainty in the at site skewness coefficient. The skew parameter is sensitive to extreme events and modest record lengths. So to improve this estimate, we can pull data from a region to increase the effective sample size. Doing this reduces sample error, and we call this trading space for time. There is a USGS website for flood frequency reports that includes a list of reports published by the USGS and organized by state. It includes reports pertaining to regional skew, as well as regional annual exceedance probability equations. Regional skew studies have also been completed by USACE, USBR, and other agencies. It is important to read through the regional skew report to not only locate the information, but also understand the region and the data used for the study in order to judge the applicability of the analysis for your site. In general, the drainage area for your site should be like those included in the regional skew study. For example, if the regional skew study evaluated basins with drainage areas between 100 and 1,000 square miles, your project should be within this range. Most often, regional skew estimates are developed based on peak flow. There are some regional skew studies available for longer flood durations, and those should be used if available. If they are not available, peak regional skew estimates can typically be used for relatively short critical durations on the order of a few days. They should not be used for longer durations because skew will typically change with duration. Use caution when applying regional skew to large basins. Flood generating mechanisms across a large basin can vary significantly. Regional skew studies often evaluate multiple options and adopt or recommend the most appropriate estimates of regional skew, which is usually the method with the smallest mean square error and the largest pseudo R squared. Mean square error is a parallel to variance. It's a common metric for uncertainty in an estimator. The larger the mean square error, the smaller the confidence in the estimate. Pseudo R squared is helpful in describing how well the regional skew model explains the variability of skew across the region. This table on the left shows how regional skew results are often presented in USGS studies. This study for the Pacific Northwest presented a constant value, which means a single regional skew value is used over the entire region. The regional skew value is negative 0.07, reported as the regression parameter, and the mean square error, which is equivalent to the average variance of prediction at the new site, AVP nu, is 0.18. On the right is an example of regional skew results presented in the text of a USGS study. This study of the southeastern United States presents a constant value as well, with a regional skew described here as a generalized skew of negative 0.019 and a mean square error of 0.143. When we have regional information available about our distribution parameters, such as a regional skew study, we can apply what is called a prior distribution. A 
prior distribution allows us to mathematically account for this regional information in the volume frequency analysis. When no regional skew information is being used in an analysis, RMC Best Fit uses a default prior distribution for skew. That is a flat or uniform distribution, giving equal probability for all skew values to be sampled between negative 2 and positive 2 for the Bayesian analysis. Because we use a uniform distribution for the prior parameter information, it does not add any additional information to the analysis. The resulting skew estimate is analogous to an at-site skew estimate. Next, we'll look at how to modify the SKU prior distribution to incorporate the regional SKU information. To incorporate regional SKU information, click the distribution for SKU to edit the distribution, and then select Normal Distribution from the drop-down menu. You will enter the appropriate regional SKU value from the regional SKU study as the mean value in RMC Best Fit. The standard deviation is equal to the square root of the mean square error. Remember that the mean square error is equivalent to variance, and the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. For this example, the regional skew value was negative 0.17, and the mean square error was 0.12. The square root of 0.12 is approximately 0.35. This normal prior distribution for the skew parameter provides prior knowledge on values of skew in the region for the Bayesian analysis to sample from, which will inform the posterior distribution or the final estimate of the skew parameter. So far, we have talked about prior distributions for skew parameters. Now, we will discuss the posterior distribution of skew parameters. Posterior, meaning after or behind, distributions are the resulting distribution of skew from the Bayesian analysis. Best Fit provides plots to visualize the posterior distribution parameters as histograms or kernel density plots. These plots show the marginal distribution of the parameter of interest. In this case, we are looking at a plot of the posterior distribution of the skew parameter. Now let's look at an example. The first thing we'll look at is the kernel density plots for an analysis with at-site data only, or station skew, and then we will examine an analysis using regional skew information. Once the Bayesian analysis is complete, select kernel density. From the drop-down list, you can select the parameter of interest. Here we've selected skew. This plot shows the posterior distribution of the skew parameter from the Bayesian analysis. In this example, we can see that skews generally fall within a range between negative 1 and positive 0.5. By checking the Show Prior Distribution checkbox, we can also show the prior density in blue which in this example is an uninformative flat prior between a skew of negative 2 and positive 2. The posterior mode for skew in this example is about negative 0.4. Since the prior for skew is an uninformative flat prior, this estimate of the posterior skew distribution is based on the at-site data and is analogous to an at-site skew estimate. Here again in the plot on the left is the posterior distribution for skew with an uninformative prior, which is analogous to an at-site skew estimate. The plot on the right shows the results obtained when the regional skew information is used to inform the prior distribution for skew. The prior distribution for skew is shown in blue, which is the normal distribution informed by the regional skew value of negative 0.17 and the standard deviation of 0.35. The regional skew study provides prior knowledge on values of skew in this region. The Bayesian estimation analysis combines this prior information for skew with the skew based on the at-site data using Bayes' theorem. The resulting posterior distribution for skew shown in red in the plot on the right 
represents an improved estimate of the skew parameter. Notice that the posterior skew has a value that is between the station skew and the regional skew values. This is analogous to a weighted skew estimate. Also notice that the width or the spread of the posterior distribution got smaller, reflecting a decrease in the uncertainty in the skew parameter estimate. This will translate to a smaller credible interval and a larger effective record length. Presented here are the graphical frequency curves comparing the results with and without a prior distribution on skew. You can see that the posterior mode skew statistic changes from negative 0.4 to negative 0.29 and the width of the credible intervals or uncertainty was reduced, which also results in the posterior predictive curve plotting less frequent. Thus, we can see that incorporating regional skew information can reduce our uncertainty in the flood frequency results. After this lecture, you should have a refreshed understanding of regional skew, understand prior distributions for parameters for Bayesian analysis, know how to enter regional skew as a parameter prior distribution in RMC best fit, and have a basic understanding of kernel density.